I open this public meeting of the Doctoral Dissertation Board of the Protestant Theological University with a prayer. Merciful God, clothed with wisdom and splendor, source of joy and light, we pray you, grant us wisdom and insight through Jesus Christ, in whom all treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden. Amen. Amen. The Doctoral Dissertation Board grants you, Celestin Tsengimana, the opportunity to defend your doctoral thesis with the accompanying propositions in this public ceremony. I invite the first opponent, Professor Dorotja Noc, Professor of Theology and Migration at the Protestant Theological University Amsterdam, to lead off the discussion. Thank you. Esteemed candidate, engaging in research on commemoration rituals and doing it based on a particular case study is the major achievement of this study. And I commend the courage, the humbleness of you esteemed candidate to carry out empirical research on such a complex topic. Nevertheless, my task today is to ask critical questions and to engage in meaningful conversation. So there we go with my first question. Right away in the middle of your concept of reconciliation. Starting with pages 67 of your dissertation, you nicely write about the theories of reconciliation and you return back to these theories also throughout your whole book. Yet you have done empirical research. And my question goes, what have you heard? What have you encountered there out in the fields? What are the understandings of reconciliation of the people you met during these commemoration services? Well, and opponent, thank you for this interesting question. Uh, based on the empirical data, I have addressed the concept of reconciliation from an African perspective. The data, the data I've collected have demonstrated that reconciliation should be understood as harmony. Contrary to what Western theorists have developed as in the term of reconciliation, in the term of relationship building, Relation, reconciliation as harmony is in the sense of organic view of Africa. In that sense, reconciliation is thought as a balance between different elements of the universe. I mean, the human being, the non-human creation, the, the spirit, including the dead and the other phenomena. In that sense, reconciliation should be should consist of maintaining that balance between those elements. Even the reconciliation is not, in that sense, limited to the relationship between individuals, but also relationship between individuals and God, between individuals and the environment, even including the dead spirit. Uh, given that my research uh, on genocide uh, was addressing also the issue of a crime that have taken many people, the dimension of reconciliation with the dead was uh, also exploited to see how ritual is, can specifically, more than other approach, address that dimension of reconciliation with the dead. While the uh, uh, existing approaches of reconciliation uh, does do, do, do not really look at that uh, transcendental dimension. 
So mm -hmm. in, the, in that sense, reconciliation from an African perspective consists of uh, repairing, restoring the, the balance be, between those elements, between the living, the dead, and also the surrounding environment and including God. You are I mean, quite consistent uh, about this binary of the African cosmology and the so-called Western cosmology, and you address some of the complexities in your in your dissertation. Yet, when it comes to African cosmology, cosmology as you describe it in your in your dissertation, uh, these notions of harmony and equilibrium play, play quite an important role. Yet, in this notion of harmony and equilibrium, when one takes it in this broad cosmological view, uh, experiences of violence are there. So I am very much interested on how do you solve the issue of violence present in this cosmology when it comes to reconciliation, reconciling uh, memories of genocide in Rwanda. Well, from that uh, African perspective, the African co co cosmology, but uh, when um, I look at killing, mm -hmm. killing is also a, I have a dimension of co contamination. Mm -hmm. When the the land, uh, the the blood of people was uh, it was uh, put on the land, the land is contaminated, and then the ritual, ritual is a way also of. Uh, La purification of purifying the land, people, and the evil people, and even the object that was contaminated by their death. And in that, in that case, when we, 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 we address the question of violence from an African perspective, violence is a bridge. <laughs> it's a bridge in that relation, harmony. And the, uh, from a meteorological perspective also, when uh, I have uh, realized that in Africa, when you kill someone, it is also a, a harm, not only to that, some, that one, but to the whole community mm -hmm. and also to God, mm -hmm. because also the community is considered as a whole. And that, in that case, violence, including killing, torture, and the other form of violence, is also a bridge in that relation harmony. And if we want then to reestablish the order and the relational harmony, we need also to repair. And could you give us some examples from the concrete people you encountered, how they cope with this issue? some voices from the field. Could you give some example about that? So uh, uh, I can take some uh, example from the, the field regarding violence. I have, for instance, a testimony of a lady when he was being hunted by the killers, he, he was asking them, what have, have I done wrong? so that I may repent. And the repentance is said, so that I may repent to God. So that I may repent to God. It's like uh, the, 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 the suffering his, she's enduring is not only uh, the, the question between he, her and his neighbor, but also God is like God is also part of his suffering. And, um, and uh, what uh, I can uh, also add is uh, I had another, another quotation, maybe from a speech of people or testimonials who were saying- Very shortly. Yes. Then we continue. Yeah? Yes. You can give shortly the quotation you want to give. Yes. Yes. Yes, you said that uh, be aware that killing someone, your neighbor is also like killing God. And in that case, we, I have brought the, 
that theology of uh, human, human being created in the image of God. And that was uh, also addressed through ceremonial, ceremonial, I mean, preaching, testimonials. And so that, that notion of image of God was also a theological uh, input from the field that uh, show that our relationship with, with our others should reflect our relationship with God because we cannot see God, but we see our neighbors within with which we live together. We continue with the opposition with Dr. Siska Stark. She is Associate Professor of Liturgy and Homiletics at the Protestant Theological University in Amsterdam. The floor is yours. Thank you. Esteemed candidate, dear Celestine, with all for all what has happened and still happening in your country, with respect for your research, I have read your dissertation. The, <clears throat> from a liturgical perspective, your study itself perhaps can be acknowledged as an academic expression of liturgical ritual. Starting your research with a kind of the first chapters kind of litany. Your research exposes the power of evil and does not absolve the church and its people and theologians from their accountability. And at the same time, your study does not linger in complaint or litany only, but you do what liturgical ritual itself usually works out, namely reflecting on the past, evaluating, commemorating, naming, or even celebrating the actual situation and anticipating a promised future promising future. In this process, as practical theologian, you deal with both empirical practices and theological theory. And reading your dissertation, I'm honored to get into dialogue with you on the following question. Your research question, as formulated on page 42, consists of two steps. The first is, how is the genocide commemoration performed in Karinda Parish? shaped and appropriated by the participants. And the second is, and how does it contribute to reconciliation? This second step, thus formulated, can in my opinion only lead to one conclusion. The performed ritual can or should contribute to reconciliation. The only question is how it does so. But wouldn't it be more honest to formulate this question, this step, far more open, since the church has, as you describe in the first chapter, no clean hands and not a sound theology, theology on, for instance, ethnicity. What makes, my question, what makes the church the most adequate participant in this process? Liturgically spoken, has the church practiced and addressed enough repentance itself, penitence? And shouldn't the church itself stay in the mode of repentance much longer? Is a corporate confession, as you write on page 153, enough? Could it be that the church is too much infected with the old identity to help forming a new what you aim for, national identity, page 4960. Throughout the study, you regularly warns for the negative implications of religion, page 4962-70. But how do you take this, these negative implications of religion and the role of the church into account in your research? Does your study imply enough of the repertoire of ritual critique. Where is the ritual critique in the study? According to the second step in your research uh, question. Uh, land the opponent. Thank you for the questions. May I may start by the question about the contribution of uh, genocide commemoration to reconciliation, mm -hmm. I can respond by yes and no. Mm -hmm. 
because ritual is ambivalent. Yes. Ritual is ambivalent. Since ritual have, uh, is ambivalent, the question I asked was to see whether it does contribute or not. And then I have uh, looked at the both dimension, both, both sides of the coin. <laughs> On the positive side, I have uh, realized that uh, the genocide accumulation does really contribute to reconciliation, particularly uh, I have seen the commemoration as symbolic, eh? mm -hmm. symbolic reparation, because the, the process of reconciliation involves repentance, the, the, the forgiveness, reparation, and then uh, rituals, uh, specifically the ritual of genocide commemoration is in the sense, sense of symbolic reparation. Me, me, that means that when people are participating in ritual, that is a good sign that uh, they are acknowledging, they are acknowledging what, what, that what was done was wrong and the victims feel considered by the community, not only the perpetrators, but also by the, the whole community. That is one in, in, in a positive way. Another way is that uh, my findings have demonstrated that uh, also there is a kind of a corporate, 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 I mean collective repentance. And with that, I bring the church. The church as institution, uh, uh, land opponent, you have mentioned that the, the church was not clean <laughs> in, the, in that crime. And then if the church wanted to continue to pursue its mission in post genocide, uh, the, the church has also as a corporate, as a community, as institution, I mean, to show that the, the way of doing have changed and they, they are committed to working differently. So uh, uh, also I have realized that also uh, ritual has the power of transformation. Because when people are performing, when people are meeting together in a, a commemoration space, they are also consolidating the relationship, but also stereotypes. Because when people do not meet, they continue thinking about us uh, negatively, but when they come together, they realize that people are changing and they are showing uh, the, the spirit of solidarity and change and the repentance. So uh, on a, going to the negative side, the other side of the coin, the negative side, the contribution that uh, I ha was looking whether also the commemoration would have exacerbated grievances. And uh, I have uh, uh, identified some, uh, I used the sec uh, secondary victimization. Secondary victimization meant that uh, when we are performing the, the genocide commemoration, the way that we are using, the action we are performing, when we are not doing that lightly, we can offend again. <laughs> The, the victims. That is why I have mentioned them in the book that that is why in a, the, commemor the public commemoration, people use calculated words. Calculated word means that, is it this the right word? Is this the, when I say this, I will I able to comfort others or I will be again offending them. I have also mentioned also the the traumatization of new generations. The generation that have, ne have not personally experienced the, the, the crime of genocide. Those who are 20 years old, you mean, I mean that now we are, after 29 years of genocide, we still have, we, are, we have people of 20, of 25, who are also experiencing trauma. I did not mention maybe in the previous question that reconciliation is not only about the relationship with the others, but also about the relationship with self. And the relationship with self in bring the question of trauma healing. And then we'll see 
okay, actually there are also people, the young generation, who are also traumatized. Yo, you learned the candidate, I will now interrupt you. Sorry for that, but we have more opponents, so we will Sorry. move on to the next opponent and uh, is uh, is he online do we have the connection yes yes so i introduce you to you our next opponent it is dr ezekiel sentama assistant professor at the center for trust peace and social relations at the institute of peace and security at coventry university in the united kingdom Previously, Dr. Sentama was lecturer in peace and development studies at the Center for Conflict Management and the Department of Political Sciences at the University of Rwanda. Dr. Sentama, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Um, dear esteemed Kande Celestin Sangimana, so allow me to say that First of all, your dissertation on genocide commemoration and reconciliation in Rwanda from a liturgical ritual perspective is really addressing an interesting uh, and relevant topic or theme, especially in Rwanda where reconciliation policy focuses much on uh, the national or political or thin dimension of reconciliation. So your dissertation also addresses a clear research gap which focuses on a liturgical ritual perspective. So from your thesis, um, I learned a, a lot. I learned that in Rwanda's history, uh, there are two faces of the role of the church, what you refer to as the church as being not clean, so the church can contribute to conflict or violence. But on the other hand, you've sh shown that the church can also contribute to conflict transformation, which I refer to as reconciliation in this case. With this said, uh, esteemed candidate, I have two questions. The first one refers to uh, the contribution of your study. And it goes like this. So to what extent genocide commemoration performed at EPR Kirinda relates to the government policy on reconciliation in Rwanda. To what extent does it contribute? In other words, are they matching? Are they complementary? Or your research or study is contributing to anything new in Rwanda? This is my first question. My second question uh, refers or focuses on the aim or the purpose of your study in terms of impact. So the question is, what kinds or kind of impact will your study results or outputs have in this case, especially in Rwanda, what are the kinds of impact? Are they academic impact? Are they non-academic impact? And how do you plan to create that impact? Thank you. Uh, land opponents, thank you for the, the question. Uh, the first question is about uh, how my study is related to government government policy. Uh, I have to explain that uh, the government policy, the, uh, the government politics about the reconciliation is to build the national identity. And that the question much the other question I have not yet addressed. So uh, in the uh, when I refer to government policy, I can mention maybe a case of uh, Ndumunya Rwanda. Ndumunya Rwanda uh, is, uh, I'm Rwandan, I translate. I'm Rwandan. It's the uh, national policy of building a national identity and a validating identity. That is the concept. 
an overarching identity over divisive identities of Hutu, Twa, and Tutsi. That it does not mean we need to eliminate the differences because differences are there, but we can go beyond the differences and to see how to build uh, uh, an overarching identity that can be beyond go beyond the differences. And then in that case, uh, in my dissertation, I've uh, really developed that uh, notion of Dominion Rwanda. And uh, I have also strengthened that notion of Dominion Rwanda by looking at it from a, a theological perspective by bringing in the, the theology of uh, Imago Dei, human being created in the image of God, and then the notion of uh, Christian identity. Uh, starting by Christian identity, I have demonstrated that when the government is uh, teaching the Dominion Rwanda and Rwanda, the church is also bringing a theological stone contribution by bringing the Christianity. But you know that the Christian identity, although it is also an overlapping, uh, it could also exclude those who are not a Christian. And then when I, I add the church of Imago Dei, and then we will be also uh, contributing to the national politics of building national identity over the divisive identity of Hutu, Tua, Tutsi, and so on. So uh, concerning impact, the impact should be is uh, both social, societal impact, uh, but also academic. Uh, in my last pages of the dissertation, I have uh, mentioned the contribution, the specific contribution of this study, the, what I have contributed to the body of knowledge. And uh, I have uh, indicated that the book itself, since it contains testimonials, pictures, and so on, it is all itself a memorial space. A memorial space that could be have printed this, I will put it online, and people, even after generations, they will know that the genocide happened and what have been going on uh, even after us, after us. So uh, next, uh, academically, uh, I have mentioned that before that uh, most of people address reconciliation from a Western perspective by only focusing on uh, relationship building, interpersonal relationship building. And then I, I brought in the academia a comprehensive perspective of reconciliation that includes five interlinked dimensions of reconciliation. I mean reconciliation itself that people used to call trauma healing, reconciliation of others, the most common category of reconciliation. And then I brought the reconciliation with God and the reconciliation with the nature, the non-human nature. And mostly as far as the, my studies concerned about the genocide, the reconciliation with the dead. So with that, I think um, I've, uh, I, I had put, I have brought a new input to the academia and also to the ecclesial practice. So particularly they have to look at the liturgies, how the then the, the liturgy can be of EPR, I've also looking at the symbols, and then uh, there are many things to address in that sense. Thank you. Then it is my honor to introduce to you Professor Nancy Adler, she is from the Netherlands, but currently staying in the United States, so therefore connecting online. Uh, professor Nancy Adler is Professor of Memory, History and Transitional Justice, a chair established by the NIOT, the University of Amsterdam and the Royal Netherlands Academy of Arts and Sciences. So I invite you to continue the opposition, Professor Adler. Thank you, Mevrouw Director. Esteemed candidate, 
allow me to congratulate you on your detailed study of the liturgy of genocide commemoration. You raise so many important questions regarding how individuals, communities, and the nation can heal after such an enormous national tragedy. Your fieldwork has allowed important perspectives and insights into the function and efficacy of current practices regarding genocide, remembrance, and commemoration. And it also facilitated some very interesting fact finding. Please allow me to probe some of the points you raise with regard to the politicized project of national memory. And we've discussed this a little bit, or you've discussed this a little bit in the foregoing. While you touch on many questions related to truth-telling and truth-seeking that are directly connected to transitional justice processes, you are adding the lesser researched context of the church and its role in the process. Aside from the question of the liturgical versus state-imposed colors for mourning, can you talk any more about the challenges to reconciliation that theology has been able to tackle? And on that note, or to be more specific, you assert that truth-telling can lead to successful location, discovery, and reburial of the bodies of the victims, appeasing the dead spirits by a dignified burial. Within the national project of memorialization, there are still or at least were for a very long time, sites in Rwanda that display the remains of the murdered victims. The lesson learned message here is clear, but this practice is surely counter to the church's perspective on how to remember and commemorate. So could you tell us any more about this practice and how the church relates to it? Thank you. The land opponent, thank you for the question. Uh, concerning the theology, uh, what they have brought to the space with the specific the theology of reconciliation, as far as genocide commemoration is, is uh, concerned, is that the uh, dimension of reconciliation with the dead. Uh, I have uh, particularly uh, blink. Uh, realize that uh, from an African perspective, remembrance is very important, particularly in Rwanda. You know, um, we used to say when we read the Bible, a tradition, a traditional way, we, we used to, to say that uh, we will live after resurrection. We have to we used to develop the theology of resurrection in a way that the after death, death life should be granted by resurrection and so on. But for, for African, remembrance, when you have people to remember you, you, you continue living even after death. After death. And it does not mean um, Christianity is uh, bringing something long, but uh, it is a complementarity because there is no poor Christianity. Christianity is still uh, embedded in a certain tradition, certain culture. And then really, when I was working on my research, I was impressed <laughs> by seeing how Africa understand after death life. After death life is granted by remembrance. And then when uh, I allow me uh, the land opponent, to bring the church into this discussion. Uh, normally in Africa, someone is remembered by people of his lineage, of his family. But I have realized that for the church, the church is, has become an extended family, an extended family. That even those people whose relatives have completely taken by genocide, the church stand to remember them. And with that, uh, I, I, I have to leave also to the nation of communicative and cultural memory. Uh, normally in Africa, it was said, it, I realized that normally when there is no church, 
after uh, three generations, the, when there is no one to remember you, you are forgotten and you are no longer part of the community. But with the child, even after three generations, there will be some people to talk of, about someone who passed away before. And the, I have related this also to the Christian notion of uh, communion of saints. We used to, to think that uh, that communion of saints should be something uh, beyond Africa, <laughs> beyond Africa. But when I was uh, uh, carrying out my research, hearing from people and the analyzing interviews and even the, the, the symbols and what people were saying, even the simple things in the literature, we also have to, to, to consider the simple thing because they are also meaningful. They are also meaningful that uh, in appropriation. And so I have uh, realized that also the, the, in uh, this research, the church should be considered as a, a continuous community. And that is uh, very important in the context of like Kidwana, because when people are together commemorating genocide, those who do not have families, they feel surrounded by the church and they, they feel that also the people will continue living, although they know relative to commemorate them. I, I know we have question? Very... There's one minute more for your follow-up question. Well, a, a very sh a small minute. This, just the second half of the question about the sites of uh, the, the killing sites and the victims' remains there. If you could just say one word about that or two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the killing sites uh, uh, and in my dissertation, I've also addressed that uh, dimension of killing sites. Uh, the, normally, the killing site be, they were considered of hostile space. Hostile space to mean that the victim or the survivors were trying to avoid, to avoid those space. But little by little, when the commemoration was going on, they have become cherished spaces to protect and even uh, to maintain as the, uh, the milieu in, uh, of encounter between the living and the dead. And then when I related that to the reconciliation process, that is a way of, that is, uh, go, that goes to the dimension of reconciliation of, with the environment of the human nature. Because when people are protecting those spaces as important spaces, I, I, I quote, uh, May concept of, uh, you, you... For now, I have to interrupt you. As important <laughs> as the as this topic is, but we have one opponent more from South Africa, a country that's also facing the challenges of reconciliation and commemoration of cr crimes. Uh, Professor Kas Wepener, professor of practical practical theology in the Faculty of Theology at Stellenbosch University, South Africa. And he specializes in the study of ritual, liturgy, and homiletics. Please, Professor Webner, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, esteemed candidate. I also want to commend you on the most important work that you have done for and in our continent. My first question has two parts. The first part of the question relates to possible phases in the long road to reconciliation. And the second part is closely related to that. I want to ask you a bit more on your usage of the concept reconciliation as such. So firstly, I want to ask, can you or could you from the um, your work, the theory and also your empirical work, determine that there are possible phases that your country has gone through with regard to thinking and practice related to reconciliation? In other words, Will the accent uh, of certain accents with regard to reconciliation be the same in the late 90s as it is in, for example, 2022, or has there been a development? And connected to that, I want to 
prompt you a little bit more on your usage of reconciliation as such. Um, I want to know a little bit more about the place of justice and reconciliation and, and, and reparation in your thinking about reconciliation. Because um, in my own context, um, early thinking about, about reconciliation, in which there was quite a lack of thinking about justice and also material reparation, had long-term detrimental effects. So I want to ask you firstly just um, about phases in reconciliation, and then secondly, I want to understand a little bit better how do you understand justice, also material and reparatory justice, in your understanding of reconciliation related to commem commemoration? That's my first question. Well done, the opponent. Thank you for the question. Concerning the phases of reconciliation, um, I can say that um, reconciliation is an ongoing process. It is an ongoing process. Even there are there's some go in the back, in the back. So uh, it is, uh, we cannot say that at a certain time we will reach the goal of reconciliation because it is a process and uh, depending on the context and that. Uh, normally, uh, in the project, in the ordinary project, we will have an input, output, outcome, and we will monitor that we are at this stage, at this stage. But uh, I can uh, say that reconciliation is an, on an ongoing process. In my research, uh, I have uh, mentioned some uh, barometer of reconciliation that by the government of Rwanda uh, country, they say we are at more than 85 or almost 95% of, of reconciliation, but that was only the level of perceptions. And the perceptions does not really uh, indicate the thickness and how deep is the reconciliation. And I think that uh, also it is uh, not an easy process of measuring, measuring the, the, the thickness of reconciliation that uh, would be a difficult project. <laughs> the, so um, uh, go, going to justice, in my study, uh, I have uh, identified the tensions some tensions between truth, justice, and the reconciliation. And the, uh, I want to, to, to indicate that uh, um, when I was analyzing my data, I realized that the truth is problematic, particularly truth about the location of dead bodies. The location of both bodies because maybe justice, although in Rwanda we have uh, the concept of justice uh, in the term of uh, Gachacha, Gachacha is the transitional justice, where the community, uh, the whole community is involved, involved uh, in the sense of uh, the, the, the conciliatory justice, justice that can bring together people instead of harming. Uh, justice uh, as as healing, but still, although we have that concept of justice as healing, that the uh, constructed justice, transitional justice, there are still some punishment, and those punishment when people were uh, see, see that when men they reveal the location of death, they ask how they have been killed and so on, and they be accountable, so they then they prefer to keep quiet. <laughs> To keep quiet, and then that uh, really that tensions, the uh, the tensions between justice, reconciliation, uh, and the truth. So, um, uh, regard to material reparation, I want mm -hmm. to say that uh, ritual is a contribution. You can contribute on it as ritual, but there is the other mechanism. There is not only rituals, 
there, there's the other uh, intervention there about the regard to reconciliation. And then uh, from the perspective of ritual, it is like the, it is like the ritual is performing. <laughs> The ritual is performing reconciliation and it is reflecting what is going on in the community with regard to reconciliation, mm -hmm. but also it is transforming because when we are performing ritual, we are also being transformed by what we are, we are performing. But in my study... Candidate, uh, if I ask you, candidate, esteemed candidate. Yeah, a follow-up yeah. question. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, I, I understand the beautiful understanding of ritual and what ritual can possibly do, but if it is not closely accompanied with um, very active monetary um, kinds of reparation, my question pertains to can those kind of more beautiful, holistic, equilibrium-seeking reconciliation rituals not actually be negative performances if it's not accompanied by those acts of material reparation more uh, first uh rituals and reconciliation is mostly about symbolic reparation about symbolic reparation but in the symbolic reparation there are The doctoral dissertation board has heard your defense and will retire for deliberation. The session is adjourned.
The session is resumed. Esteemed candidates, the doctoral dissertation board has taken note of your doctoral thesis and has heard your defense. The board has decided to confer upon you the degree of doctor. I now ask the thesis supervisor, Professor Marcel Barnard, to bestow this dignity on you in the customary manner. by the power vested in us by law and in accordance with the decision of the doctoral dissertation board here present i confer on you celestin sengimana the degree of doctor including all rights and duties associated with this by law and custom with regard to science church and society as evidence of this, I present to you the degree certificate signed by the rector and thesis supervisor and bearing the seal of the university. Young doctor, very learned gentleman, dear Celestin. What a wonderful study on an impressive subject you have conducted over the past five years. You often did that alongside other busy activities in church and university, but where, it may be said with a wink, also helped a bit by the corona pandemic that locked us all up in the study for a long time. And how good was it to have you in Amsterdam for a few months every year before the pandemic so that you could time and again give us a strong impulse to your research. You can be proud of the results. And that you are now standing here with a book and a doctor's degree in your hands. It is right that you have already been appointed as Dean of the Protestant Institutes of Arts and Social Sciences in Bhutan, and as lecturer of practical theology and Christian approaches to Peel's peace building in the same institute. Therefore, it is an honor for me to be the first to congratulate you on your achievements. And of course, I'm very happy to include your wife, Immaculé Mukunda Yambaye, in my congratulations. And I also include, and now I'm winking to the camera, your three daughters, Premises Irakotse, Gloria Impano, and the youngest, Celestine Ineza, who taught me a few words of Kinyarwanda Kinyar and forced me to pronounce them correctly when I was at your home. And you watch now from Rwanda, I'm waving to you, be proud of your dad. My field visit to Rwanda in 2018 to the commemoration of the genocide as performed in the Kirinda par parish of the Presbyterian Church of Rwanda, uh, to various memorial mon monuments in Kigali and Murambo are undoubtedly among the most impressive moments in my academic career. It was only then and there that I really became aware of the ruthless cruelty of violence and senseless rage of the diabolical powers that can hold of ordinary people, friendly neighbors, nay, members of church councils and church ministers, that I became aware of the unimaginable sufferings that still dominates the lives of so many today. The fact that you wanted to make an African contribution to reconciliation with your, with your dissertation is a sign of hope a sign that is added to the other signs I luckily also saw. May the Lord have mercy on you, your land, and your people. The important contribution you make with your dissertation is that you describe and analyze memorial rituals and liturgies very precisely and show how they selectively reconstruct past the past 
to meet the present needs for unity and reconciliation, as your fourth proposition says. You show how memorial rituals can contribute to reconciliation, but if not performed under the right conditions, can also prevent it. Poignant is how the issue of the missing bodies, often thrown into the river and disappeared in Lake Victoria, necessarily evoked the concept of absent ritual. I greatly appreciate the fact that you weigh the findings of your empirical research with African concepts of reconciliation, where a lot of questions about that. Reconciliation is less an achieved result, rather, but rather a continuous process of repairing and consolidating relationships. Relationships of humans with themselves, with others, with God, with the dead, and with non-human nature. As you conclude, the genocide commemoration is one of the me mechaniz me mechanisms of symbolic reparation. By building memorials and participating in commemorative rituals, the community acknowledges the harm done and commits to change. And that's your first proposition. Doing research is to collaborate. In the research project itself and in the practical circumstances that condition the project. You rightly thank the respondents in your research who were willing to share their often painful experiences and also the people who assisted, assisted you with the fieldwork and its elaboration. Here in the Netherlands, I would like to thank co-promoter Martin Hondert of Tilburg University. This is our fourth and last promotion we have supervised together. And I, again, thank you very much for the fruitful and pleasant cooperation in recent years. Practically, the research was made possible by the generous contribution of the Fondation pour l'aide au protestantisme réformé in Geneva, here presented today to our honor by Mrs. Laura Casorio. I would like also to mention the support staff of PTHU and Irillis who have put in more than usual effort to practically make this afternoon a success. Enough for now. Before you travel back to Rwanda again on Monday to celebrate there that you have obtained your doctorate, we here in the Netherlands want to celebrate that achievement with you. Let it be a festive day and week. I have said, ik heb gezegd. Very learned Dr. Tsengimana. I may also, on behalf of the doctoral dissertation board of the Protestant Theological University, I may also congratulate you on the dignity that you have acquired. And I invite you to sign the album of the doctors of the Protestant Theological University. I will now close the session with the doxology. And of course, after the ceremony, you are all invited to follow the cortege. First, the doctor, the paranyms, and his wife, and then the professors, and behind them, after them, you are invited to follow us and celebrate and congratulate the young doctor. To the almighty God, through whose light we see light, be the glory forever and ever, through Jesus Christ, amen. <laughs>